All right. Hi, everyone. Um, we had some technical difficulties with the first live stream. The camera was sideways. So I am hoping that this is working now. Let me see if I can pull it up on, yes, my computer. Okay, so I think we're good. I'm coming across as flat so we can go ahead and start again. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties. So I'm gonna pass the camera over. Here. My, oh, you're not, I already flipped it. My mom is recording, so you guys have to be nice to me. You can't leave me any hate comments or my mom will come <laughs> punish you. I will. <laughs> okay, so welcome to the holiday cookie party. Um, if you guys saw the notice before, I'm going to be making some cashew butter snickerdoodles today. I thought since Christmas and the holiday season is coming up and going on, we could all have a fun little holiday cookie party together. So I have already prepped most of my ingredients right here. The oven just finished preheating. Um, but if you don't have the ingredients, you can totally just watch and hang out. I'm going to be making the recipe, but I'm going to try to interact with you guys here too. You don't have to show them that. I have the comments just on my computer. So hi everyone, it's nice to see you all. All right, so um, first things first, if you were making the cookies with me, you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I just did that ahead of time. And then the next thing we're going to do, I'm actually going to take the phone for a second. So here are all of our ingredients. And the next thing we're going to want to do is to make a flax egg. So here I have a tablespoon of ground flax seeds and I'm going to add it into three tablespoons of water. And then we're just going to stir this up and let it sit for a few minutes. So while that is thickening, I'm going to be talking you through the rest of the ingredients and we'll go ahead and get started with the rest of the recipe. So we have some dry ingredients and some wet ingredients. For our dry ingredients for the cookies, we are going to need about a cup of flour. I've tested this recipe with a bunch of different flours. You can use all-purpose flour, whole wheat pastry flour, even a gluten-free flour blend. Today I'm going to be using, it's like a white whole wheat flour. And then for the rest of our dry ingredients, we have some cinnamon, some baking powder, some cream of tartar, and some salt. And cream of tartar is apparently essential to snickerdoodle cookies, or so I've been told. Um, it makes them chewier and more tangy. And then for our wet ingredients, we have some cashew butter, because these are cashew butter snickerdoodles. If you want to, you can use another type of nut butter, or you can use sunflower butter if you have a nut allergy. Just keep in mind it's going to affect the final flavor. Then we also have some coconut sugar here. This is our flax egg that's soaking. Some plant-based milk and some vanilla extract. And then, so this is, makes our cookies and we have some coconut sugar and cinnamon. Over on the side, we're going to put the tops of our cookies in that later. Um, someone just asked if you can use almond flour or coconut flour. Um, I haven't tested it with those. Can you film me now? Mm -hmm. Uh, I haven't tested it with almond flour or coconut flour. Coconut flour is hard for vegan recipes because it's very, it absorbs a lot of liquid and it's also really dry and crumbly. They would, I want to say they would work with almond flour, but it would probably be a little bit harder to roll the actual cookies out. It might be a little sticky because almond flour is kind of dense. So if, unless you're like grain free, I would probably recommend using like all purpose flour or a whole wheat pastry flour or spelt flour. And if you're gluten free, you can use a blend. I wouldn't recommend making these with oat flour just because when you when you grind up the oats, um, they become a little bit more coarse and the cookies won't be as smooth and fluffy at the end. Um, let me just scroll down, see the comments. Okay, so we're going to get started by mixing our dry ingredients together. So I just have a small bowl right here. Sorry, just zoom in on the bowl. <laughs> okay, so we're going to add the cup of flour to it. And then we're just going to add the rest of our dry ingredients. We have some cinnamon, baking powder, cream of tartar, and salt. And then you can just use a whisk or a fork, and we're going to mix this until everything is evenly distributed, or should I say incorporated. Oh, I think it's someone's birthday. Happy birthday. All right. So then that's all that we have to do for our dry ingredients. You can go ahead and set that aside for now. And we're going to get started on the wet ingredients. So first I'm just going to add the coconut sugar to the bowl. 
as well as the plant-based milk. It's about two tablespoons. You can really use any uh, plant-based milk that you want. I would just recommend that it's unsweetened because you already have the sugar in there. And I'm using coconut sugar, but you can also use brown sugar or regular cane sugar if you want. Just you want a granulated sugar. You can't really substitute it for maple syrup or something like that. So next up, I'm going to add in the cashew butter. And I love cashew butter in these snickerdoodles because it has a really like subtle flavor so it doesn't taste too much like nuts when you eat it. And I also think cashew butter is kind of naturally sweet. So it works really well. Okay, so then next we're going to add in a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then we need to add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Someone asked if you can use almond butter and you can use almond butter, just the final cookies are going to taste a little bit like almonds. This apple cider vinegar does not come out very fast. So we're just gonna shake it. Okay. Just going to put this aside. And then now we're going to cream all of these ingredients together using an electric mixer. If you don't have an electric mixer, that's totally okay. You can still use a whisk or a fork, but it just takes a little more elbow grease. Your arm will probably get tired, but it's okay. Um, but you just want to make sure that the, the granules of the sugar get like whipped into and creamed into the rest of the ingredients so they become more dissolved. So. Our flax egg is pretty solidified now, so it's good enough. So I'm going to add that in with the rest of the wet ingredients too. Let's put everything over here. And then now I'm going to use the electric mixer, like I said, to beat everything together. You kind of want to do it at a low, low to medium speed. You don't want it to be too high or it's going to fly everywhere. And I'm going to do it probably for about a minute in total. together now just gonna check on the comments oh someone asked if I have a dog um, I do well I don't personally have a dog but I'm staying at my parents house in Maryland right now and we do have a dog her name is Amber but she's upstairs I think they're trying to make her behave so she doesn't bark during this video um, and someone else asked how long does it take for the cookies to make it really doesn't take that long you could probably cook them in around I'd say 20 minutes or so um, they only bake in the oven for six to eight minutes so this is probably the longest part. So we have our creamed wet ingredients, excuse me, and now I'm just going to add them into the bowl with the dry ingredients. Can you raise the camera higher? Mm -hmm. Or you can get a little closer, but just so everyone can see what we're doing. I'm gonna take the whiskey out. We don't need him anymore. So now I'm just going to add this in. Until everything, yeah, that's good enough. And then, someone asked who is filming me, and it's my mom. So you guys can all say hi to my mom. Hello, everybody. <laughs> all right, so now we're just going to mix this together until it forms a dough. And I'm starting it with a spatula, as you can see, the more you mix it, 
the more it becomes incorporated into the flour. Eventually it might get a little tricky to mix, so I might switch to a fork. We'll see how it goes, but sometimes the batter just sticks a lot to the spatula and it's a little harder to mix with. But we seem to be doing okay so far. People are saying, hi mom. Um, someone's asking how many calories are in the cookies and I don't really know. I don't track uh, nutrition information, but um, chronometer, chronometer.com, it's like a free website. If you wanted to plug all the ingredients into there, you could figure it out for yourself, but I don't really do that. Okay, so as you can see, it's starting to look a lot more like a dough. We're almost done mixing it. All right. And as you can see, it, it kind of looks a little bit sticky, but that's okay. Depending on what type of flour you use, it might be more or less sticky. But you can see it's not like sticking to the, step, the spatula. Uh, it's not sticking to the spatula, but it's still like kind of sticky, if you can see. So like when I touch it with my finger, it is going to stick a little, but that's okay. It's okay if we're not perfectly neat. So now we have our cookies. So now we have, you can get a little closer. <laughs> so now we have our cookies and we're going to roll them out. For this step, it might be easier to get your hands wet or to spray them with like a little bit of oil. It'll make sure the cookie dough doesn't stick to your hands. So I'm just gonna wet mine in the sink. But what we're going to do is roll out our cookies and then place them on a cookie dough sheet. You can spray your cookie dough sheet with some nonstick sprayer, like grease it with a little bit of coconut oil, or use parchment paper. I'm using some of these reusable silicone mats. You guys probably see, the, see me use them in a lot of my videos, so I'm just using that for my cookies. And then also at this point, we have this extra bowl here. I don't know if you guys remember from the beginning, but I have about a tablespoon of coconut sugar and half a teaspoon of cinnamon in here. And I actually haven't mixed it up yet, but I'm just going to whisk this together to make sure the two things mix together. And then I'm going to roll out each of my cookies. And then before I place them on the cookie dough tray, I'm going to place the top of it into this mixture to place it on the tray. Um, I don't know if you guys have made snickerdoodle cookies before, but they're actually one of my favorite re favorite cookie recipes. And traditionally, it's like a classic, sort of just, I don't know, boring vanilla cookie. Uh, and you dip it in cinnamon sugar and then put it on the baking tray. But I like to add extra cinnamon to the dough just because I love cinnamon a lot. Okay, I'm going to get my hands wet for a second so that the dough doesn't stick. And then for making the cookies, it, I would probably recommend about two tablespoons of dough. So I just got one here and then another one here. And then see how, because my hands are wet, it's really not sticking at all. And I'm just going to flatten it out into a cookie shape like this. And um, these aren't going to expand a lot in the oven, so you want them to be pretty flat when you put them on the baking tray. So I have my cookie here, going to plop it in the cinnamon sugar mixture so it gets nice and coated. And then we're just going to put it onto the baking tray. And we're going to repeat that until all of our cookies are finished cooking. So while I roll the rest of these, I'll try to answer some of your questions. So Suzanne is asking, what inspired you to make this dish? Um, I just said it a little while ago, but snickerdoodle cookies were always one of my favorites. I've always really loved cinnamon, to be honest, so I think that's why they're one of my favorite cookies, because they're cinnamon cookies. And when I was thinking of holiday recipes that I wanted to make for my blog this year, I was like, oh, I really want to try to make a snickerdoodle cookie, because I don't even think I've had a snickerdoodle or like a vegan version um, since I went vegan. But as you guys know, I like to try to make my recipes more oil-free and like with a healthier twist on it too. So I wanted to try to make one without any vegan butter or vegan oil. So that's where the cashew butter comes in handy. So this recipe I think should make close to a dozen cookies. If you wanted to make your cookies smaller too, you totally could and it would make even more. So I'm just rolling out my cookies and dipping them in the dough so they get in the uh, coating so they get coated and then placing them on the tray. 
So someone else asked, what plant-based milk did I use? And can I say hi, Grace? Hi, Grace. And I used unsweetened almond milk. Um, but you can really use any milk that you want. You can use soy milk, rice milk. I would just recommend that it's unsweetened because, like I said before, there's already going to be um, a decent amount of sugar in these from the coconut sugar. Okay, so... The dough is starting to stick to my hands again, so I'm just going to get them a little wet with water and then continue rolling out the dough. This is what I do when I make a lot of recipes where the dough is kind of sticky. Because I'm sure if you guys have baked before, you don't need them to be too, too wet. Um, it just gets annoying when the dough like starts coating your hands and it gets kind of gross. So I got one tablespoon, about two tablespoons of dough, and then I'm gonna roll into cookie. And as you can see, it's like not sticking at all again since I just got my hands wet. Someone asked me if I ever buy chocolate almond milk. And to be honest, no. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really buy a lot of um, plant-based milk. I don't really use it in a lot of recipes, like in my everyday cooking, like if I'm just making oatmeal or stuff, I usually just use water and I never really just drink a glass of plant-based milk. I only really buy it if I'm like testing recipes like cookies or brownies or I'm making something where I need it that way. It takes me forever because I buy all my groceries for myself. It takes me forever to go through a carton. <laughs> Okay. Someone asked if you can eat the dough raw, and yeah, you can. It tastes really good. Um, because it's vegan, you don't have to worry about contamination from the eggs. I'm pretty sure you can eat any vegan cookie dough raw. I mean, this one's really good. It just tastes like cashew butter and cinnamon and sugar, so. I was always the kind of person who like liked eating the raw dough more than the actual treat. Like, when I was a kid, I always liked... I like doughy things. I think that might be why I like oatmeal so much. Like when I was a kid, I liked the, the birthday cake more than the actual icing. And I remember one time, uh, me and my best friend, when we were younger, we made Christmas cookies, or we were going to make Christmas cookies. Um, I wasn't vegan at the time. And they were just regular sugar cookies with like a ton of butter and eggs in them. And we thought the dough tasted so good. I'm not even kidding. I think we ate like 90% of the dough raw. And then only made like five or six cookies because we were just eating it and we felt so sick afterwards. But it's also probably uh, because we just ate a lot of sugar and butter. But I don't know, what do you guys, do you like the dough more or do you like the frosting more? I'm definitely more of a dough person. Even like raw pizza dough, that's probably weird, but I like raw pizza dough. All right, so we probably have about three more cookies in here. I'm just going to um, get my hands wet again because as you can see, the dough is starting to stick a little. Yeah, a lot of you guys say you like the dough too. Um, what? They're asking if they're crunchy or chewy. The cookies? Ah, okay. Do I like my cookies chewy or crunchy? Personally, I like my cookies chewy. I don't really like them crunchy. Like like I was saying, I like I like eating raw dough. I don't really like the corner brownies because I want the like the mushy brownie that reminds me more of the dough. I don't really like when it's like kind of crusty. So I'm just pushing the dough together with a spatula so it'll be easier for me to make it into cookies right now. Let's see, is my mom vegan? No, but she is a vegetarian. Someone wrote what, Rachel wrote, what kind of savage likes crunchy cookies? I like the way you think, Rachel. I kind of agree with you. But you're, you're allowed to like whatever you like, but these are more chewy. Like the edges are still crispy, but they're definitely not like a biscotti texture or something like that. Okay. How much space do I need to leave between the cookies, someone asked. You don't need to leave that much space. They aren't going to expand very much when you put them into the oven. So it really doesn't matter. So the recipe makes about 12, and as you can see, 
and just kind of put them like this on the baking tray. They're not gonna run into each other. You could have them even closer if your tray was a little smaller too. Okay, I think we have room for one more cookie and it's pretty much going to use up all of my dough. This one's a little bigger than the other ones, but it's okay. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so we used up pretty much all of our cookie dough. I'll say that's good enough. And pretty much uses up all the topping too. And then as you can see, we have 12 cookies here on this tray. So like I said in the beginning of the video, you wanna have your oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I already have mine up there, so I'm just going to pop these in the oven. And you can bake them for six to eight minutes. I like to bake them for eight. They're not gonna ever get like super crunchy cookies, but it makes them a little bit more crisp on the outside. If you want them to be really, really soft, I would just do it for six, but then it also depends on what altitude you're at and if your oven like generally runs a little more hot or cold. So I'm just going to put these into the oven now and put them in like the middle shelf of your oven. You don't want them up here at the top. I'm just gonna set a timer. I'm gonna just do eight minutes and I'm just gonna wash my hands really quickly and then I'll answer some more of your questions. Someone asked, do you ever try vegan ice cream? And if so, what flavor do you like? I like vegan ice cream, I think it's delicious. Uh, my absolute favorite flavors, uh, if you live in the United States, the brand is called So Delicious. They're like cashew milk ice creams are all really good. They have, it's I think it's salted caramel cluster. There's like chocolate and salted caramel and it's really, really good. I'm actually usually not a big fan of salted caramel but that one tastes really good. They also have a snickerdoodle one too that I like. And then another company that I like is Nadamu. They're coconut milk based ice creams. And I honestly love all of their flavors. They have a maple pecan one that's really, really good too. And someone else asked, can I do a video about why I don't eat oils? I actually already have a video about that on my channel as well as some oil-free cooking hacks. And I do eat oil like when I go out to eat and stuff. I just personally don't cook with it in my own kitchen when I'm making like everyday meals. Um, someone asked me what flour I used. I used, I can show you guys. It's like a random thing my mom bought on Thrive Market. You can really use any flour. It's like some sprouted white wheat flour. But you can use all purpose flour. I wouldn't recommend whole wheat flour. I would recommend whole wheat pastry flour because it's a little more fine. Um, just whole wheat flour is more dense and it, it they'll, they'll taste like healthy cookies and you can use an all-purpose flour blend or something like that, or a gluten-free flour blend too. Um, let's see. Someone else, it's not gingerbread, someone else asked, but I do have a recipe for gingerbread cookies on my blog if you wanna check that out. And it's also in a recent YouTube video that I posted too. Um, someone else asked, can you add coconut shavings on top of the cookies? That would be really good. It's not a classic snickerdoodle, but I mean, I think it would be good. So yeah, go for it. Someone else asked, how long have you been a vegan? I went vegan on my 21st birthday, actually. So I'm 23 now, so it was July 18th. Oh goodness, what was that 2015? 20, no, 2017 minus two, that's 2015. Well, anyways, it's been like two years, two and a half years. <laughs> I'm not going to math. I already graduated and took all those math classes. I don't have to remember that anymore. Oh, someone says, what the heck, you look 14. Thanks, hopefully I still look younger for my age when I'm like 40. Um, Wesley said, I appreciate your channel. Thank you, Wesley. And someone else, a lot of few people are asking, do I miss any foods that I ate when I wasn't vegan? Honestly, no, I don't really miss anything i think when you go vegan you think you're going to miss like certain foods that you ate but when i went vegan i discovered a lot more foods in terms of different plant foods that i can combine and different fruits and veggies and new flavors that way and i think the if you think of the classic standard american diet 
there really isn't a lot of variety, but when I went vegan, I started incorporating a lot of different spices and flavors into my meals, and I started to come up with new flavor combinations that I like, and now I don't really be, now I don't really crave like a Big Mac, well, I never eat a Big Mac, but I don't crave like eggs or yogurt or something, but I'll really crave avocado toast or french fries or sweet potatoes or something like that because your taste buds do adapt and change over time. So personally, I really don't crave anything. The Actually, I just posted a recipe for some vegan spinach dip on my blog. And when I was making that recipe, I was thinking about it. I was like, oh yeah, I miss eating the spinach dip that my mom used to make all the time. But nowadays, there are so many vegan substitutes for everything. I feel like it's really easy to veganize a lot of the foods that you used to like before you went vegan too. Oh, Javier says we share the same birthday on July 18th. That is true. That is my birthday. Well, happy early birthday, Javier. It's almost your half birthday in a few months. Um, someone said, were you vegetarian before you were vegan? Yes, I was raised as a vegetarian. So both of my parents were vegetarian. My dad is vegan now. Um, but yeah, so I grew up as a vegetarian. So there are a lot of things that the standard American diet, like people who eat the standard American diet will eat, and I've never tried. So like I've never had a real burger, I've never had seafood, like shrimp or anything like that. Um, so I don't really miss those foods either. So it's a little bit harder for me to answer that question and like things that I'm craving. Uh, someone asked for tips on going vegan. I do have a YouTube video about this as well as a whole playlist called like the vegan starter kit if you guys want to check it out but in general I think it's important to go at a pace that works best for you because some people can go vegan overnight and it works really well for them but sometimes that doesn't work out and you want to pick something that's more sustainable for you and easier for you to transition in the long run so even if it takes you like a couple of weeks a couple of months maybe even a year to go completely vegan I think as long as your heart's in the right place that's what's important and then another thing I always say, I think it's important to make an ethical connection because if you just go vegan for health reasons, there are a lot of people who go on quote unquote diets and everyone cheats on their diet every once in a while, you know? It's like people have a cheat day or they'll be like, oh, it's okay, I'll just have a piece of cake. But for me, because I'm vegan for the animals as well, uh, I would never want to cheat and have a piece of like regular non-vegan cake because I'm like, oh, well, that still needed cow's milk to make and that's not worth it for me to eat because I don't believe in the non-ethical treatment of animals. So that's just, those are too many tips, but if you want more, you can check out the video. Someone else is asking me for recommendations for vegan cheese. I'm just saying, okay, we have a minute and 39 seconds left on our timer. But um, personally, I don't eat a lot of vegan cheese in my day-to-day -day life, but this, if you're looking for cheese slices, I think Follow Your Heart makes some really good ones. They have some good smoked Gouda ones. Uh, the Fieldworks Chow cheese is also really good. If you're looking for fancier cheeses, like for the holidays, or if you want to make a platter or something, excuse me, Miyoko's uh, Kitchen, they make some really, really good ones as well. I've heard good things about tree line cheeses as well. And I also like Heidi Ho. Those are more like nut-based, like cashew cheeses that are softer, that are easier to spread on crackers. Um... Someone asked, where do you buy the Honest Company dips? I think the Honest Company is um, cleaning supplies, but it's the Honest Stand dips. You can get them in a lot of Whole Foods. They have a store locator on their website. They're not everywhere, but I think they're like more prevalent in like the Colorado area and on the West Coast. Um, you can also order them online, though, too. Oh, Billy says he loves my smile. Thank you, Billy. And I'm trying to read all of your questions. I'm sorry, guys. Do I have any siblings? I have two young brothers. Uh, one of them's at work and the other one's hiding upstairs. Someone else has been asking me what motivates me to stay healthy. I think, only 16 seconds. I think personally I just, uh, I feel really good when I eat healthy food and so I keep that in mind. Like when I go out with my friends and if I ever want to have a treat sometimes, I'm just gonna turn the timer off. Um, and I ever want to have a treat sometimes, I let myself have that. But I know at the end of the day, I feel best when I eat lots of water, eat lots of greens and veggies, so that's what I try to do. So, it's been eight minutes. We're going to take our cookies out of the oven. As you can see, they've gotten like a lot more puffy. And they did get a little bit bigger, which is good. So, now, they're actually pretty soft right now, if you can see. 
So we're going to let them sit on the tray for probably around five minutes or so before they harden and then it's, it'll be easier to take them off of the tray. So I'll just talk to you guys for five more minutes and then I'll try a cookie and then I think that'll be it. If you guys like this format, I was thinking I could go live on like a monthly basis and maybe make a simple meal along with you guys. So if you're interested, you can let me know and maybe we can do this more regularly. Um, someone says, oh, someone likes our oven gloves. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, someone, a few people are asking me what vegan YouTubers I watch. Um, I honestly am subscribed to a lot of channels, and if their videos are interesting, I'll watch them. But I don't watch like any one person's videos consistently, like all of the time, every time they post. But um, I am subscribed to Kalel, which is what this person asked. I also like Bonnie, Rebecca, Hi Carb Hannah, my friends Jasmine and Chris on Sweet Simple Vegan. Um, I'm trying to think who else. A lot of people. <laughs> There are a lot of vegan YouTubers out there and they have really good channels. I like like Sarah's Vegan Kitchen, Sheep Lazy Vegan, Simply Quinoa has some good ones, Supreme Banana is funny, um, my friend Lisa Ramey has a channel, my friend Remy has Veggiekins. Um, I don't, I'm honestly subscribed to like, I think over like 40 different vegan YouTube channels and I don't want to forget any person, but they're all really good. I think you can see who I am subscribed to from my YouTube channel too, so if you're looking for more vegans to follow. Uh, you can go through that too. Uh, uh, uh. Oh yeah, Chill Vegan is really funny too. Someone just commented that, Kate, not Caitlin. She's really funny. I think her videos are hilarious. She's a great personality. Um, someone said, what do I think of Oreos? I mean, I like Oreos, but there is some controversy there. So technically Oreos are vegan, but they're made with palm oil, which uh, is like, causing rainforest deforestation and it hurts a lot of the wildlife in the area and the animals so I don't really like them for that reason personally I don't really buy them but you can buy knockoff Oreos that don't have palm oil in them either oh yeah sweet potato soul I love Janae see it's hard when you're put on the spot to come up with everyone but sweet potato soul has a really great channel too oh and hot for food can't forget Lauren um but yeah, oh, Liv B. Yeah, I love Liv too. See, guys, I love all these people, and I've heard of all these people. It's just hard to come up with on the spot. I actually met Liv in California a few weeks ago. Oh, and actually, we filmed a recipe video together with Thrive Market, and I made these snickerdoodles um, in the video that's on her channel. On my channel, we did, like, savory vegan recipes. So let's, let's check on our cookies. We still have two minutes left, but even now you can kind of see they're getting a little bit... They're a little bit harder. They're not as... Uh, pillowy as before so also just a tip sometimes they might kind of like stick to the bottom what I like to do when I pick them up I'll like twist the cookie so it separates from the bottom and then I pick it up from there and it comes off cleanly oh wow there's a hair I'm great at getting my hair and everything and you guys always catch me too but you know what I'm cooking for myself so Oh, that's fine, whatever. Okay, so anyways, we have our final cookie. It's still pretty soft. They'll definitely harden up more with time, but I'm just gonna eat it now. I'm um, tasting good. What can I say? I mean, honestly, guys, I tested this recipe like five or six times before I finally came up with the final one. So I'm really happy with how this came out. And I gave these to my roommate, who's vegetarian, and I just told her, "Oh, hey, yeah, there's some cookies downstairs. You can try them if you want." And she came upstairs to my room and was like. Caitlin, these taste like there's eggs in them. And I was like, is that bad? I was like, did I somehow make my cookies taste like eggs? And she's like, no, it's good. It tastes like they're not vegan. So I personally like them. I hope you guys like them too. Um, I think that is everything that I'm going to do for this live stream though. Thank you all so, so much for hanging out with me. Like I said before, we can make it more of a regular thing if you want to. Um, I love all of you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope you have a great rest of your holiday season and rest of your day. So I'm going to say bye now. So bye guys. Did you end it?